In this video, I'll show you how to organize your notes from this to this. I love that OneNote has an infinite canvas where you can click anywhere and start writing. Each click creates a new container and everything you write stays in that container. You can move these containers around and even merge the contents of the two containers together. But you can't align them easily like you can in other applications like PowerPoint. And this makes your canvas look messy if you have multiple containers. And never mind the fact that many people use a single container for completely linear note taking, ignoring the infinite canvas. This is fine for capturing simple notes, but when you have a lot of notes, it's hard to read and process information if it's taken this way. Organizing information in a structured format, like in tables, makes it easier to understand and retain the info. Tables provide structure and allow you to even color the cells, which you can't do with a container, by the way. And this helps further in visually organizing the information. This is why I use tables all the time. I'll show you some examples and show you different ways to create these tables. This will help you see the value in organizing information in a way that makes it easier to process and remember. So let's get started. This is an example of linear notes. It is organized. We have headers with bullets underneath and the notes are taken from top to bottom. This works fine when there isn't a lot of text, like in this current example. But even in this case, when we put the same information into a table format, it is easier to read. So here we have the same notes in a table format with three columns, one for each header. And to me, this looks a lot more organized. We've arranged the header horizontally left to right and put bulleted content underneath them. And what this does is allow us to see the relationship between the headers and also the bodies. And this allows us to quickly scan the table and process the information easily versus the linear note here. So let's try to create this table together. You can go to insert table and you can click and drag the number of cells that we need for this. And don't worry if you don't get this right because it's super easy to um, add the columns and the rows later. So here, what you wanna do is for each snippet of text, you can select and just click and drag into the cell. But honestly, what I find easier is to just select the text, control X, and then just pasting it. So we can do this with the rest. So that was pretty easy. But now let's suppose that when you created the table that you didn't add the correct number of rows and columns. That's easy to fix. If we click into the table, you'll notice that the table tab gets enabled. So let's click into it. And now you have all these options to insert column to the right, insert column to the left, and you can insert column to the row below or above. And if you don't need these columns or rows, you just have to select them and hit the delete key on your keyboard. Now there is a shortcut for all of this that you could learn. Frankly, I can never remember them, so I will show you a better way. Since I use tables all the time, I actually have some of the commands added to my quick access toolbar, which is right above here. So how you can do this is if you go to file, go down to options, and then here you have the quick access toolbar option. From the drop down, you want to choose table tools and you can scroll down to select the right commands that you want. Right now, I just have add table selected, insert column to the left and insert column to the right. Adding rows is actually very easy because you just have to hit control enter to add a row below. And that's easy for me to remember. So I'm not going to add a command to the toolbar. So I'm going to hit OK. And you can see from here, whenever I click into a table, I can just add a column to the right or left. And if I want to add a row, just hit control enter and that'll add rows. Let's go ahead and delete these. And there you go. Okay, so now we have a more sophisticated example here. We have some notes about the project management process. Again, the notes are well organized, but we can make it better. 
So we have the same information here represented in a table format. The first example uses a project management process group, again, the information that we saw earlier here. But now we go horizontally from phase one to phase five. This makes sense to me because this is a timeline view and the phase of the project goes from left to right. The second example is for the project management knowledge areas here. Since there are so many, I listed them from top to bottom with the header in the first column and the body of the text in the second column. It's easier for me to digest information this way. Whenever possible, before you start to capture the notes, think about how it should be organized and put it in the table format from the beginning. This way, you're not having to reformat the notes after. But if you've already captured the notes linearly and want to reformat them into tables, it can be a bit of a pain. Creating an empty table shell and then dragging text into them can be time consuming for sure. So in the next section, I'll show you how you can use Copilot to automate this for you. So here we have the notes on project management process groups. I'm going to highlight the text by clicking in the container and open Copilot. You can find that in the Home tab, Copilot. And I prepared a prompt to use, and basically all it says is to use the selected text on the note page and create a table. The headers should go horizontally and the text body should be underneath each header. I'm gonna go ahead and send this off. And it does take a few seconds for the response to generate. Now, one thing I don't love about using Copilot with OneNote is that the response doesn't get pasted directly into the note page. I essentially have to copy it and then paste it into the note page myself. It's not a big deal, but it does take an extra step. So as you can see, it took all of the information from up top and then it put it into a table format at the bottom. Now we are missing these numbers. I, I do want to include the five process groups. So the number has to be here. So I will type in, please include the numbers of the process group. And we'll wait another second. Sometimes you do have to refine the prompt to make sure you get what you want. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this now. And I'll copy the updated response and paste it in. And now we have what we need. So again, this is much better than manually dragging in the text from your linear notes into each cell of the table. Sometimes it does take a couple of prompts to make this work, uh, but when it does work, it is super helpful. If you really want to level up your table formatting, I would suggest using nested tables and also color shading. You can actually put a table inside a table for further organization, and you can hide the table borders so that it doesn't look too busy. Here we have the project management process group again, but I've layered in additional information in the body below here. And you can see that there are two columns. We have the title and the body text. And if I actually select this table and go to table and show borders, uh, you can see that more clearly. And maybe in this case, it's actually more helpful to have the borders around it. So to create a nested table, uh, all you have to do is make sure that you are clicked inside a table cell as we have now, and just go to the table, and create the number of cells that you would like in the table. And then you can start typing things in here. And of course, once you select a table, you can hide the borders, you can put some shading around it. Um, so there's a lot you can do to further organize information within a table cell. And as you can see, I put some shading around the headers and I've also included some emojis to make this table look even more refined. And all I did was really just click into the text and then hitting Windows semicolon and selecting the emoji from here. So as you can see, table allows for you to have a lot of structure and organization around your notes. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. If you want to know more about a specific feature or process in OneNote, drop them in the comments below and I can look into making that video for you. In the meantime, check out these other videos about OneNote. 
Thank you.